Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, uh, post lecture video uh, that will be about the BJT that we started yesterday in class. Um, so uh, yesterday, if you remember, we in class we had the chance to go uh, uh, to, to understand how the, the bipolar junction transistor operates and which are the fundamental relation, let's say, re relations that uh, uh, we need to keep in mind when we deal with it. Um, toward the end of the lecture yesterday, we, uh, we started uh, um, uh, a part uh, that uh, um, in which I wanted to, to to show you how we actually use in practical condition the BJT uh, uh, in the common emitter configuration, uh, uh, but also uh, uh, in other configurations. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, we, we had only the chance to, to briefly talk about one of these uh, uh, practical configurations, uh, which was uh, uh, we called the fixed, fixed bias configuration, if you remember. So um, uh, I would like here with this uh, post lecture video to actually show you the other two. So in total, we will see three important configurations uh, or maybe circuit implementations of the of the common emitter uh, um, uh, bipolar junction transistor and these are very important uh, uh, as we will uh, use these next week and the week after uh, in uh, in uh, um, um, uh, in amplifier imp implementations so these three different solutions um, are, are, are a fundamental part of the theoretical approach we are doing here, uh, uh, you know, in order to understand fully uh, the operation of the bipolar juncture transistor. I will brief you also at the very end of this uh, section I wanted to, 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 to discuss with you, uh, I will also briefly mention uh, another uh, transistor uh, configuration that is the common uh, common base, and uh, and uh, at the very end, uh, the a nice a very nice model of the bipolar junction transistor, which is the Eber small model, which relies effectively on the fact that uh, the the bipolar junction transistor is made by uh, two p-n junctions back to back. Uh, so, uh, we, but we will see this uh, at the very end. So, um, have a look at the video and uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. See you. Okay. Um, so, um, Yesterday, uh, toward the end of the lecture, we had uh, started uh, this um, section related to understanding, you know, uh, how in practice the BJT is used in the common emitter configuration. Um, sorry, just a moment. And uh, so, um, um, if you remember the re fundamental results we, we got yesterday during our uh, analysis of the quality, qualitative analysis uh, uh, of the BJT transistor and in order to understand how it operates. Uh, so the fundamental results are summarized here. And um, uh, we, we've, we've went through this already, so there is no reason that I uh, I go through through these in detail right now, uh, but the most important results is that when the transistor is active, which means that VBE, uh, the 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 VBE is roughly VBE on, which means that the junction between the base and the emitter is forward biased. Uh, um, then the the transistor is active if uh, uh, VCE 
is bigger than VBE. And in this situation, we've uh, said yesterday that uh, uh, IC is proportional to IB and uh, through, through this relation with beta quite big of the order of hundreds. And also IC is uh, um, alpha IE. And uh, um, to this, we also added, I didn't write it here, the fact that uh, uh, then we can also write that IE is equal to beta plus one IB. Um, I'm not sure I, I mentioned any values for these currents here, but a typical example is, we will see examples anyway now, but a typical example is that IC is in general in the order of, you know, few milliamps and IB is instead in the, because of this relation is in, in the order of, you know, tenths of uh, microamps. So obviously IB is generally very small, while IC is uh, hundreds of times bigger, generally in the, in the milliamps uh, regime. Okay, uh, so we, um, uh, just to remind you, the aim of, uh, of, um, of what we will do in this section is to uh, see how practically we can implement the common emitter or, or any other uh, configuration uh, with a circuit. We will see actually for the common emitter three circuit realizations, which uh, are extremely important for us. Uh, and so we need to uh, keep them, uh, understand them very well. And, uh, and uh, as uh, we will be uh, using them when we create amplifiers with the BJT. Uh, so we will we will uh, analyze these uh, three circuit realizations. Um, um, well, when we say analyze, we mean uh, 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 try to realize to understand where is the quiescent point, the quiescent point of the of the circuit. Uh, uh, and, and generally, obviously, in the active region uh, of the BJT, and also keeping an eye on the stability, if you remember, we, we did mention this also yesterday, the stability of the operating point Q, because, uh, uh, if you remember, um, <coughs> the final quiescent point Q, which is uh, uh, um, represented by uh, the question point Q is represented by the pair uh, VCE and IC. These quantities depend on some parameters, may depend on some parameters of the transistor like beta, VB on, uh, and so on and so forth. This may depend on, uh, on temperature. Uh, and so, and that's why it's important to consider uh, also the stability of this point Q on the on the um, uh, uh, IV characteristic of uh, our uh, nonlinear component uh, BJT. And as I briefly mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, we will also having, be having a look here at the uh, uh, another configuration, just, just to know what it is, the common base uh, or, or CB configuration. So yesterday in the lecture, toward the end of the lecture, we uh, started uh, the uh, so-called CE1 or fixed bias uh, common emitter configuration, which uh, effectively corresponds to this circuit implementation here. Uh, and so uh, there is a, a generator connected to RB, which is connected to the base of the BJT, uh, and the emitter is directly to the reference potential connected. And on, uh, on the collector, there is uh, our power supply VCC connected uh, through a resistor. And so here, if you remember, we we um, we tried to do the analysis, assuming that the BJT will be in the active regime. Uh, so it's in the active regime if VB is VB on and VCE is bigger than VB. And so um, we wrote down the fundamental equations for this circuit. So KVL1 relates to this mesh, if you remember, uh, and uh, and so. Assuming that I have everything, I have V in, I have RB, I have VB on, in principle from this equation I could define IB. 
uh, if uh, then I have IB from this equation I can find uh, IC and then from uh, the uh, Kirchhoff voltage law on the uh, um, on the um, collector emitter mesh which is this mesh here uh, we can uh, write this equation here and again assuming that I have VCC and I have uh, RC I've just calculated as IC I can find VC from this equation obviously depending on the problem you are uh, uh, dealing with uh, you, you may be asked to find uh, you, you know you may be given IC and you are being asked to find to design RC and RB appropriately to find the value of RC and RB from these equations uh, what my point here in, in, in showing you these equations in this way is just to uh, make you realize that these three equations are those that are important in solving any problem related to this specific configuration and in the way that I just presented it to you allow you will allow you this equation for example to identify Q which is the pair VC IC uh, by uh, um, as, as you can see this uh, uh, last uh, uh, KVL relates to what we are now used to call the load line and uh, if I if I if I um, write uh, you know in the um, nonlinear characteristic of my BJT the dependent variable is IC the independent is VC so from this equation let's try to uh, uh, solve this equation in terms of the, the dependent variable IC uh, as a function of the independent variable so that's what I did here and as you can see this is a straight line as we also said yesterday uh, the, this term is the intercept and this is the slope and so if we plot uh, this line uh, over the characteristic of a, of, of, of a transistor, now I picked uh, this is a general uh, transistor characteristic, F forget for a moment the specific values here. Uh, and so if this line will be something like that, and if, if you remember the way we plot this line is uh, we can plot the, we can find the VCC over R, which is a point over the on the IC axis and then the, ideally the other thing to do is to say uh, for which VCE uh, IC will be zero uh, VCE in this case VCE equal to VCC and so I have a point over the VCE axis which could be this one for example which is VCC and so now I can draw the line through these two points that's it so this is the load line and so as we said yesterday Q will be on this um, on this uh, uh, line will lie definitely on this line uh, and so the specific value in the end will depend on uh, uh, in this case on the, the specific value of IB so depending on the actual value of IB could be this IB for example and then this means that Q is this one here okay so uh, I, I think we discussed these things yesterday uh, as you can see if uh, IB is too big then Q moves toward the saturation and eventually obviously the maximum current it can go to is this one here I think yesterday we did make the comment that so this is effectively what we call IC sat and IC sat is very close to VCC over RC and that's why we could uh, reliably you know in a very good approximation say that effectively IC sat is in general very well approximated by this quantity for this specific structure uh, circuit realization and uh, we should also remember that in general we I think we said this uh, yesterday as well VC sat is always around one volt uh, could be half volt could be 1.5 always in the order of one volt anyway not too far from one volt let's put it this way and um, and uh, if instead IB uh, drops then Q moves in this direction eventually down here 
where the current IC is becoming now extremely small, eventually very close to zero. And so the, the transistor is turning off, in fact, is in the cutoff regime. Oh, uh, I think I, I did mention yesterday as well that uh, uh, for this reason, for the fact that depending on IB, which you know grows in this direction, sorry, uh, depending on the IB, uh, 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 Q can move along this uh, line, spanning effectively from saturation into active mode into cutoff. Uh, uh, if we want the transistor to be safely, let's put it this way, into the active mode, uh, it, a good uh, design choice is to have uh, Vc equal to half Vcc. As I stated yesterday, this is a good design choice if there is no other constraint that has been uh, uh, imposed. Okay, if this doesn't violate any other constraint that, uh, that has been imposed. So if, uh, if uh, nobody is telling us anything about VCE, a good choice is to have VCE equal VCC over 2. And if you remember, the reason was in such a way, so in this case, for example, I've said, let's say, let's say that VCE is 8. So a good choice is VCE. Sorry, in, the, in this uh, case, uh, I, I, on this plot, VCC was 8. So, in this specific, uh, assuming that this was a, a real application, uh, I would choose Vc equal to 4, which is Vcc over 2. In this way, Q will be definitely here, once I solve the equations above there, and so on and so forth, and find uh, um, uh, the corresponding IB, and so on. So, in this way, a Q, Q being here, it means that the transistor is operating at a point that is as far as possible from saturation and as far as possible from cutoff. That's the, the point. And so here is illustrated in this, uh, in this final uh, plot, uh, the, 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 this point regarding uh, Vc equal Vcc over 2. Okay, let's have a look at an, a practical example now. Okay, so these are the kind of uh, also exercises that you could uh, could be related to uh, an exam question. Uh, so let us imagine that we are dealing with uh, um, our uh, <coughs> excuse me our uh, uh, common emitter. Uh, configuration in fixed bias. So the circuit is this one here. Uh, we have VCC uh, uh, 15 volts and V in also is 15 volts. That's why I have only one generator, as you can see, connected both to RB and connected also to RC. We, we assumed, we, we are told that we can assume VB on equal to 0, 0.7 volts and the bit of the transistor is 100. Uh, we have to find RB, RC, such that IC is 2 milliamps, milliamps and uh, 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 well, we can assume that VC is VCC over 2. Okay, so again, how do we solve this? So from KVL1 that we discussed above, uh, KVL1 was this one here, KVL1. So from this equation, so we calculate um, IB. So IB is equal to V in minus VB on over RB. But IB, from the fundamental relations we found out yesterday uh, uh, of the BJT in active mode, IC is beta, beta IB. So IB is also I C over beta, over beta. And so from this uh, equality here, since I know I C, I know beta, I know V in, I know V beyond, I can find R B. And so we find R B. So R B has to be 735 kilo ohm. So I should... Uh, I should point out here that in order to find a proper value for IB, RB, I am using 
two fundamental parameters here of the transistor that is beta and v beyond okay and from kvl2 the other uh, voltage kirchhoff voltage law we can find rc and uh, remember that kvl2 was this one here so we can find uh, RC from this equation, we have everything. We have VCC, we have IC, which has to be 2, 2 milliamps according to the design. We have VCE, which has to be VCC over 2. So we can calculate RC. And so RC is given by uh, this relation. And so assuming that VC is this, we can find RC from this chain on equalities must be 3.75 kilo ohm. And so the final design. Uh, contains a resistor, a base resistor of 7, 735 kilo ohm, a collector resistor of 375 kilo ohm, and this will put the BJT in the operating point Q that has VCE equal VCC over 2 by design, so 7.5 volts, volts is missing here, and the IC will be 2 milliamps. And uh, we should also note that according to what we've said above, IC sat for this circuit is VCC over RC, and this is 4 milliamps. VCC is 15, RC is uh, 375 kilo ohm, so this makes 4 milliamps. So you can see here in action what we said that uh, the the query, according to this design, especially assuming uh, this point here that VC is VCC over 2, also the current is effectively midpoint between zero, which would be transistor off, and four milliamps saturation. Okay, so uh, you can see this thing in action. Now here though I want you to reflect, uh, sorry, and uh, let me also show you here uh, these things in, in, a, in, a, in a plot. So uh, the load line would have been this one here. Here I'm drawing some potential uh, IC, VCE characteristics for different IB. Remember IB grows in this direction. And uh, so uh, if this was uh, 4 milliamp, as I've indicated, VCC over RC, um, and this is uh, 15 volts, uh, then uh, VC 7.5 volts is somewhere here, uh, 2 milliamps is somewhere here, and so Q is this point. And uh, as you can see, again, this is IC sat, which is very close to 4 milliamps. Uh, what I want you to reflect on is that, again, in this fixed bias configuration, we what we are relying on is the fact that VB on is indeed the 0, 07 volts and that beta is indeed 100 ohm. Uh, so, first of all, from transistor to transistor, there may be some variation both on the value of VB on and both the value of beta. But also, these quantities depend on temperature. So they may also vary because of this. So you can understand, and you can see it in these equations, how the design is affected by these possible variations of parameters. You can see that if beta changes or beta beyond change, be on changes, this will affect the value of RB, which effectively affects the value of IB. And if IB changes, uh, correspondingly the IC will change and correspondingly uh, uh, the, the, the position of the point Q will change along the load line. Okay, so that's really uh, the, the point of the stability of the point, the, of the quiescent point that I was talking to you about. So the fixed bias we concluded yesterday is a very nice, simple uh, 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 circuit approach, circuit uh, realization of the common emitter, but also suffers from uh, these uh, um, stability issues of the quiescent point because it heavily depends on beta and VB on, and temperature, and so on and so forth. And these are the things that effectively I'm, uh, I'm uh, saying here. So uh, definitely this circuit is uh, 
is uh, is uh, extremely simple and uh, because of its simplicity it can be used actually to operate the BGJT as a switch so if you need uh, uh, something to operate as a switch you know on off pass current don't pass current then the f even the fact that the quiescent point is not so stable it may not matter so much so you could create a switch where uh, a switch means that the transistor is quickly is 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 um, uh, uh, is brought uh, in succession from being on which means either in active mode or saturation to being off so in cut off regime and here is the example that i think i did mention in the last few minutes of yesterday's lecture so let us imagine to consider the previous uh, um, design the previous example so the, we take the results of the previous example and uh, the only thing we do is we add a switch in this way so on one side we have v in which if you remember v in was also equal to vcc and uh, on the other side we have uh, the other side of the, 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 the switch can be either connected to effectively reference potential so zero volts or to v in that's what the switch is doing. When the switch is in position A, uh, it means that the base is effectively connected to, to reference potential. When it's in position B, effectively we are referring to the previous uh, uh, circuit, to the previous uh, problem. So, uh, uh, as I said, we are assuming everything that is the same as the previous problem. So VCC is 15 volts and this is also equal to V in. V beyond 0.7, uh, beta is 100. Uh, as we calculated above, uh, the um, realization with V in 15 volts um, uh, and I, in such a way that I see was 2 milliamps and so on and so forth, uh, um, resulted in RB equals 735 kilo and RC 3.75 kilo. So, with this in mind and uh, with this, uh, the addition of the switch, what we have is, if S is equal to B, if S is contact with B, we have effectively the previous uh, situation of the previous problem we just solved, and so we expect that the tie C will be 2 milliamps. The BGJT will be in the active mode. But if I then s s move S into A, uh, then effectively uh, there is no generator anymore in the uh, base uh, circuit. So this means that IB will become zero. So IB becomes zero, and so VB will be zero. This means that the B junction is off. And as we explained yesterday, when we were trying to understand the operation of the BJT, this means that IC is also zero, and so it's in cutoff. And we can understand on this graph what is happening. So, uh the, the 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 when the 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 switch is in position a uh, uh, the transistor is off and so it's down here q uh, when it is on we know that it was somewhere here but even if uh, uh, it was it was up here is always fine i mean there is always current that's why i said on it doesn't really matter if it is either active or in saturation in this specific case it was in saturation, so, so sorry, excuse me, it was in uh, in the active mode, so probably was moved somewhere here. But it could be anywhere as long as there is a current, you know. Uh, it depends what you're trying to achieve, is if you need more current or less current or a specific value of current and so on and so forth. But the main idea is that by moving the switch from A to B and to B from B to A, you're effectively moving Q from somewhere here to here. On, off, on, off. That's the that's the thing. Uh, one last uh, question that somebody could uh, ask uh, uh, regarding this uh, circuit realization is: which is the input resistance of the circuit, as seen by the input uh, generator? So Im imagine this situation here, as I as I depicted uh, in the as I I've, as I've drawn it in this diagram. So, uh, what is effectively V in seeing in front of it, 
in front of itself as a resistance. Okay, which is the resistance? Well, if the B junction is forward biased, we know that this, first of all the input, let's say mesh, is represented by this circuit as we uh, come to know now uh, with the previous analysis. So. Uh, when the B uh, junction is forward biased, effectively the B junction can be replaced simply uh, by uh, assuming uh, the. Um, uh, I'm uh, assuming, you see, I am approximating the B junction with the two zone non resistive model of the PN junction. Eh? So, uh, very simple, very, very simple. Uh, so, we can approximate the junction simply with VB on. And so, uh, which is the resistance I see? Uh, we need to think in terms of Thevenin, you remember. Well, this is already a Thevenin equivalent circuit. It has one resistance and one uh, generator. And so, this means that the resistance I see is RB. So, the input resistance in this case is RB. If instead the BE junction is reverse biased, well, in the Using the two zone resistive model, we said, well, replace the junction with uh, effectively an open circuit. And what resistance do I see here? Well, the resistance is infinite, the circuit is open. Okay. The input resist, the concept of input resistance is important because is the one that the input resistance is what will, uh, uh, will, um, is the resistance that will, uh, or the impedance, that will uh, um, uh, define once I attach the generator to the circuit, uh, will define how much current will be flowing. That's the importance of the concept of input resistance. So when the, the, the circuit is on, so the B junction is on, the, the, sorry, the transistor is in the active mode, uh, the input resistance is RB. And so and that's what uh, uh, will uh, um, we'll, uh, um, uh, define the input resistance. Okay, let us move now to uh, the next um, the next circuit, which is the emitter bias. Uh, so uh, CE2, uh, the emitter bias uh, configuration is the one that is represented here. As you can see, I'm starting to simplify the notation a little bit. Uh, the generators from now on will only be indicated by the label. I, I will not be drawing them anymore explicitly as I did uh, probably at the beginning, uh, like, uh, where was that, the first, uh, like, like here, for example. Okay, so uh, we now underst understand what we mean uh, by those symbols, so from now on I will just put the labels VCC, VIN, and so on. So, with this kind of circuit, what am I doing really is simply adding this resistor on the emitter side of the previous fixed bias configuration. So that's the only the only addition. Everything else is the same. Now, um, let us see how the fundamental equations need to be modified. So again, we have the mesh that uh, relates to the input. And then here there is uh, another mesh that relates to the, let's say, the collector emitter side. So KVL1 relates to the input, so VE in equal all these things. Uh, remember also uh, what we know about the currents, uh, as we discussed, and uh, the KVL2, the, the mesh that, that, relates to the, that relates to collector emitter, uh, we can write uh, this thing here. Um, now, remember that based on the things we know, IC is alpha IE, but alpha is very close to 1. So effectively IE, as you can see, is roughly IC. So 
uh, having this in mind, this equation provides me with, again, the load line, uh, which now takes, obviously, a bit more complicated form because there are now two resistors on the collector emitter mesh. And uh, that's why this is the intercept now. And this is the slope of the load line. Uh, also, again, as we did previously in the, in, uh, the CE1 fixed bias configuration, uh, IC sat in this case will be VCC over RC plus RE is the, the intercept. And um, uh, also from KVL1, what we can do is replace IE with beta plus one IB, so that from this equation now we can calculate IB, as I did here. Okay, so here is uh, now the reason why we have added this resistor. What do we see as compared to C1? that is happening in, in this new configuration CE2. So the increased stability of C2 over C1 is actually in the dependence of IB from beta. As you can see here, IB depends on beta. And effectively, here is what is happening. Because IB is proportional now to something that is O1 over beta, and if we remember IC is beta IB, this means that IC now is effectively much more constant than in C1. So uh, in the best scenario, in the best case scenario, IC it now is immune for variations of beta. So we haven't excluded uh, completely, you know, it, 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 this is not, this configuration is not uh, uh, free from uh, uh, other dependencies, but at least it's free from a direct dependence from any variations affecting beta. And that's, uh, that's a very good thing. Okay. Um, so, uh, just to be more accurate, the, the above conclusions that I've, I, I've mentioned uh, are, are true, are fully true, if, obviously, you see that the, the IB at the denominator is actually all this thing. So, uh, IB is really a, a proportional to 1 over beta if uh, we can assume that RB plus uh, beta plus 1 RE is roughly this thing, so that RB effectively can be neglected, okay, which can be translated into this condition here. Okay. Um, also, which is the input resistance of the circuit as seen by V? As we, this is the same question we asked previously. So for this circuit, which is the input resistance? Well, again, uh, it's meaningful just to ask it when the, the circuit is in the active mode, because otherwise there is no current passing anyway. Uh, uh, so, uh, B, when is uh, forward biased, uh, this circuit, the, the, the circuit, the, the mesh that involves the input to the circuit, uh, could be equally represented in this way. I'm, uh, I'm I'm considering the fact that here, the current flowing here is IE, is not IB, you need to be careful, and IE is beta plus 1 IB, okay? So, uh, if we wanted to represent a mesh where the current flowing is IB, I need to take this beta plus 1 factor into consideration, okay? Uh, now, IE is passing through RE. So if I want to go from this situation where here IE is passing into RE to a situation where I have IB passing through a resistor, that resistor, to make sure that this holds, uh, that resistor must be, must be beta plus 1 RE. And that's what I did here. 
I'm just trying to translate this circuit into a simpler circuit and basically take into account that I want to transform the presence of the junction in something simpler. And that's what I've done here. So really the input mesh is this circuit. And in, in, in the entire circuit now I have IB flowing through, as you can see. So the, the input resistance can now be calculated using uh, Thevenin. So the Thevenin equivalent resistance for the circuit is done, remember, by shorting the, the generators. And so what we get is that, uh, this is an approximation obviously to the input resistance, uh, uh, is of the order of uh, Rb plus beta plus 1 Re. Okay. So this, this is an interesting result. Uh, as we can see, the input resistance uh, depends on both Rb, but also on beta plus 1 times Re. So this means that Re is seen from the input of the circuit amplified by a factor beta plus 1. Okay. Um, oh, for this particular uh, uh, realization of the common emitter circuit, uh, C2 with a, with a um, emitter bias, um, it's called the emitter bias because the presence of this resistor effectively makes sure that the emitter is not anymore at the reference potential, but now is at a different potential, generally positive. If IE is flowing this way, at this point I will have a potential equal to RE IE, isn't it? So that's why it's called the emitter bias. And uh, in this specific uh, circuit realization, um, it's generally a good design choice to take VCE equal to VCC over 2 and V equal VCC over 4. Uh, the reason is VCE equal VCC over 2. We've seen it previously why it is interesting. Uh, but if VCE is taking up half the total voltage available, uh, that is VCC, uh, then a good choice is to uh, uh, half of that available voltage that is uh, in total was VCC over 2 available, uh, um, half of that, so VCC over 4, to be uh, assigned to V. So here we have an example, again, to try and see, uh, to, to make sure that you learn to um, uh, design this circuit properly. So we have an emitter bias uh, uh, circuit uh, realization here uh, with these details. So we know VCC, 15 volts, V in. We have VB on, which is 0 0.7. We know the beta of the circuit, which of the transistor, which is 100. And so we are asked to find RB, RE and RC in such a way that IC is 2 milliamps, VC is VCC over 2, and VE is VCC over 4. So again, the solution, we start from KVL1, which was uh, this equation here, and we substitute, uh, as you can see here, I've put VE, uh, which is the potential at this point, uh, as I said previously. And uh, we know that this is uh, VCC over 4. Uh, we know that IB is IC over beta. I'm transforming IB because I, I know IC. So, uh, I, well, I don't know IB, so, but I, I calculate it. Uh, I can um, uh, uh, replace it with that, with the things I know. And so, uh, we replace V in with VCC because that's what uh, the, the data was uh, were telling us. And so, we can calculate from this equation R, RB. So, we do all the substitutions here. And so, we get that RB must be 528 kilo. Uh, from KVL2, which is the Kirchhoff voltage law applied on the collector emitter side of the circuit, uh, we can write this equation here, and so uh, we can impose that VCE is VCC over 2, V again VCC over 4, and so we can calculate RC from the circuit, from this equation, which will be 1.88 kilo. And finally, we need to find RE. 
So how much is a re that we need? A re is found by imposing that v, which is a re ie, as we said previously. Uh, we need to use that ie is roughly equal to ic. And so we have that, re, that v must also be equal to vcc over 4, according to what we've been told. And so we have this equation now that we can use to find re. And so RE is VCC over 4 IC, which again is uh, 188 kilo. So uh, as you can see, RE and RC are the same. And so finally, the design required to uh, realize the things that we were asked, uh, that is having, uh, you know, IC 2 milliamps and so on and so forth, uh, requires RB 428 kilo, RC equal RE, 1.88 kilo. And this will put the BJT into this quiescent point with VC 7.5 volts and IC 2 milliamps. So uh, I mean purpose choosing in all these examples, practical examples I'm showing you uh, uh, that uh, IC is always the same, 2 milliamps, as you can see. So, so you can appreciate how by changing the circuit uh, from CE1 uh, fixed bias to CE2 uh, emitter bias, uh, we can follow how the values also of the resistors may change. As you can see in C2, in this realization here, uh, RB is 528 kilo ohm. In the example we looked at with the other realization, the simpler one with the fixed bias, which was uh, this one here, RB was different, you see, 735 kilo ohm. Okay, so uh, we, obviously we are changing circuit, so that's obvious you should expect changes. Uh, but still, the two circuits all put the attempt, at least to in putting the, the, the BJT into the same quiescent point, assuming that the BJT also has the same properties, same VB on and same beta. So you can see how uh, the different circuit realization will end up obviously with different design of the parameters required. So RB, R, uh, C and RE in the case of uh, the C, C2 realization, the, the emitter with emitter bias. Okay, and uh, so again, obviously, the, if we were to plot what we just did, so this was the load line. So as you can see, we, we cannot, on this plot, we cannot spot any differences from the corresponding plot we did for the fixed bias example. It's exactly the same. But the, the, the difference now is that we know that uh, IC, this IC here, is much less prone to instabilities. For example, it won't depend so much, at least anymore, on beta because of the, the emitter bias configuration that we are using. So finally, the last uh, uh, and best uh, circuit realization of the common emitter uh, configuration is the one we call here CE3, uh, the voltage divider. So in this, um, the, the circuit is the one that uh, you can see here. And uh, as you can see, um, in this circuit, the, the beauty of this circuit is that here we don't need beta in the design, in the, in, 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 in the calculations we will do. Also, please note, I've indicated here V in, but this is really just a label. It doesn't represent a, a generator. So be careful because this can be a bit misleading now. But this is just to remind you that for us, for the, the sake of the circuit, this is what this point here, the voltage at this point here is what would represent the V in. Actually, when we will use this as an amplifier, this is where we will attach our a, a small AC signal. Okay, so in, in effect, it represents an input, but at the time, at this moment, this is just a label. Okay, it just to indicate us that this is what uh, the voltage that effectively uh, um, is going in input into the uh, into the BJT, the, the base of the BJT. So 
let us have a look why this is such a nice circuit. So, uh, first of all, in B, we can write KCL, the Kirchhoff uh, current law, in this way. Okay. Uh, for this circuit to operate in the way, the nice way that I've just anticipated, that you know it's basically completely independent from beta. We don't even need to know how much is beta. Um, the fundamental condition is this one that I1 and I2 are much, much bigger than IB. So effectively, the current flowing here is more or less the same, but very big as compared to what IB may be. Okay, so in this condition, I1 and I2 are more or less the same. Let's call this common value I, generally I. So uh, the KVL1, the Kirchhoff uh, voltage law for this mesh, is VCC equal to R1 plus R2I under this condition, I remember. And, uh, and so, um, uh, from, from this relation, I can already uh, uh, find out uh, that the, 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 one initial condition is R1 plus R2 roughly equal to VCC over I. Okay. Now the question is, okay, this is the fundamental condition we need to impose. Okay. So, how much should be I? Well, we know that IB in a transistor that is in the active regime, IB is in the order of, for example, 10 microamps, and the IC will be in the order of milliamps. So roughly is 100 times bigger. But that's exactly the kind of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, relation I would say this much bigger means. So I1 and I2 could be 100 times bigger than IB. So that's why a common choice that people do is to say, let's take I equal to IC. That's a very reasonable thing to do, just because we know that IC is roughly 100 times bigger than IB. So let us uh, choose I to be equal to IC. That's a very simple uh, also rule to follow, if you like. <coughs> so this is one, uh, one thing. And um, uh, the other thing to, to, um, uh, that we need, because you see, in this uh, realization here, now we need also to find R1 and R2, except RC and RE. So we have four resistors that we need to, def we need to find uh, equations that will allow us to find, in the end, four resistors. So, we have one relation, which is this one here. We need another one. The other one comes from the fact that, as I show here, our uh, um, the, the input, the voltage in input to the base of the BJT is V in, as I labeled it uh, there, uh, which is the voltage divider. That's why this... Um, this realization is called the voltage divider because R1 and R2 effectively create a voltage divider under the assumption that IB is extremely small. And so this current is equal to this current. And so under this assumption, uh, V in is the voltage divider. And so by, you know, operating, um, um, doing some algebra, very simple algebra on this relation, I can turn this uh, equation into R1 over R2 equal VCC over V in minus 1. Now, uh, V in, how much is V in? Well, V in, we can have a look at this path to realize how much should be V in when the transistor is in the active regime. Indeed, and here comes KVL2. Uh, uh, if I look, uh, sorry, maybe I'm anticipating something. Uh, sorry, this will come later. So uh, uh, the other equation we have to consider uh, is the uh, collector emitter uh, mesh. And so we can write KVL2, 
which is VCC equal RCIC plus VCE plus REIC, uh, IE. Uh, remember always that IE is roughly equal to IC, so we can uh, um, uh, substitute. And so we can find from here, again, uh, same story, the load line. The load line in this case is uh, this form here. Uh, it's obviously the same as the one we've seen already for the for the configuration CE2 uh, emitter bias, uh, and um, again uh, uh, as previously as for CE2, also here uh, um, the good uh, design choices are v VCE equal VCC over two and VE equal VCC over four. Um, And so uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, you can use uh, this equation to effectively calculate um, RC in such a way that IC has a specific value. Okay, and, uh, and uh, you can use this one here to um, uh, define uh, RE as well. Okay. So, from what I've shown you up until now, as you can see, beta is nowhere. Okay, so for this circuit, we don't need to even to know how much is beta, and that's the the important thing about this circuit. So in this circuit, we don't need to know really a lot about the the the, the BJT. We don't need beta. We don't need to know I B. We don't need any of these things. The only thing we need is VB on. We will see it in the in the application we do in a moment, and so uh, it is just to just to understand how this thing works. It is the collector emitter mesh that sets IC, and so the BJT adjusts it, adjusts itself to draw the required current IB from the voltage divider. So, in other words. That's why this is a fundamental condition. Here, I have a huge current, which is equal to IC, we said. A large current flowing here, in such a way that when I ask the transistor to provide here IC, it will be able to draw the little current IB that is required in such a way that IC will flow here. This is 100 times smaller than IC and so 100 times smaller than this as well. So the transistor has effectively, a, 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 is able to draw IB from this huge current that is flowing here. So whatever is the IB that the transistor requires to, to, make, to, to make sure that here IC is circulating, it will be able to draw it from this current. That's the idea. So that, that's why we don't need to know IB, we don't need to know beta, because we are assuming that here there is a large enough current that can support any value of IB that the transistor will ever require to make sure that here IC circulates. And the IC is only the, the IC that will circulate here is only uh, defined by RC and RE, as indicated by KVL2 and uh, uh, this condition here. Remember that IE is IC effectively. Okay, and, so, and that's that's really beautiful. I think it's a very nice uh, thing. Uh, and so this is the circuit that really provides the most stable operating point Q against variations of the BJT parameters. The only thing, really, as we will see now, uh, that you need is to know. Uh, uh, VB on. Okay, that's the only thing. So here we have the example. So uh, here is our circuit realization of C3 with the voltage divider. Uh, we know VCC, uh, we know VB on is 0, 07. And we are asked to find R1, R2, RC, and RE in such a way that IC is 2 milliamps, VCE is VCC over 2, VE is VCC over 4, and as we said, I1 and I2 are much bigger than IB. Okay, so 
uh, in the solution, as we said previously, let us call i1 and i2, which will be the same under the assumption we're making, is equal to, uh, we will call it i, and we will uh, um, impose that the, uh, this i will be equal to ic, 2 milliamps. Okay, so uh, KVL1 from uh, the, the, the voltage divider mesh, uh, we, as we said previously, VCC equal R1 plus R2 time I. And so from this, uh, we have this first equation here. And then from the voltage divider, the potential here is given by uh, this equation. And so we have this equation here. So we have two equations, a system of two equations in R1 and R2 which obviously will provide R1 and R2 if we solve it. Now the question here, who is V in? As I was anticipating a few minutes ago, V in, to find out who is V in, we can look at this branch. So V in is, if we use Kirchhoff voltage law, V in is, when the transistor is in active mode, VB on plus V, is, is the potential across the junction plus the potential here. And V is uh, by by uh, the data we are giving. This is must be VCC over four. We know V beyond, so we know V in effectively, and so we can put this quantity into this point here. And so we can now solve the system. And so uh, we can um, let me call VCC over I because we know VCC, we know I, as we said, so we can call this a quantity A, which is, uh, if you do the calculation, is 7.5, 10 to the 3. And uh, also, uh, uh, the, uh, this, this quantity here, which is effectively this quantity here now, according to what we said about V in, uh, can be calculated, we call it B, and this 2.37. Uh, sorry, I, I, obviously here this is in ohm. Eh? And so from this first uh, equation, we can, uh, 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 sorry, from the second equation, we can write that R1 is B, B R2, and we can substitute this into the first equation and get an equation from which we can find R2 now, and that's R2 which we get 2.23 kilo ohm. Uh, uh, and then we substitute R2 in here, and we find R1. As you can see, I do the calculations at the very end. It's important because if you start approximating, you, you have a huge approximation at the end. Uh, and so always do the calculations at the very end, uh, as uh, you know the values needs to be quite accurate. So R2 is 223 kilo ohm, R1, 5.27. Now, uh, regarding the collector emitter uh, mesh, uh, we have KVL2, which is VCC, RCIC, plus VCE, plus VE. We know this one, which is VCC over 2, VE is uh, VCC over 4. And uh, so we can, uh, we know also IC, so we can calculate uh, uh, from this equation, we can calculate uh, RC. And that's what I do here. RC will be 1.88. Now, the fact that VE must be VCC over 4 also allows us to find uh, RE. And this is what I'm doing here. So VE is RE times IE. And this must be equal to VCC over 4. IE is also roughly IC. And we know IC. And so RE must be VCC over 4 IC which is also 1.88 kilo. Again, as you can see, R, RE and RC will be the same. And, uh, and so the final design is, has uh, R1 equal to 5.27 kilo, ohm, R2 is 223 kilo, ohm, and RE and RC are the same. This will put, again, the transistor in the same question point we've seen up until now, so 7.5 volts and 2 milliamps. And still, IC sat is still the same, 4 milliamps. And also the plot is obviously the same as the previous. But the only thing now is that in this realization, Q is extremely stable. And finally, 
which is the input resistance of this circuit. Here we will define the input uh, resistance, the input, let's say, uh, in the way that I'm showing you here. Okay, uh, just because we don't really have a generator in this um, in this circuit uh, uh, um, uh, realization, we did not have um, a generator in input that was providing. It was provided through the resistors, if you like, the voltage to the to the base. So uh, we will call the input to the circuit, as we will see also in the when we will turn this into an amplifier, and we will use in addition to all this, also uh, 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 an, a an AC input signal, this, as I anticipated previously, will come in here. And so really the input for the circuit is this one, between these two terminals. So uh, uh, the question is, uh, let us redraw the important bits of the circuit, the, the input, let's say, circuit, uh, that will be important to calculate the input resistance. So uh, uh, what I need to keep is uh, effectively this part, uh, these resistors, and also this part here. So and that's what I've done. I've also uh, substituted the, the B junction with the two-zone, as usual, the two-zone non-resistive model, which effectively is just a generator VB on. And we still remember that on RE, the, the, the current passing is beta plus 1 IB. Okay, so remember the trick we used previously. And so uh, if you want to find the, the, which is the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen from this point, uh, what you need to do is now to short all the generators. And so shorting means that this point now becomes uh, a ground reference potential and so as you can see this this line also is reference potential so that's why r1 effectively becomes now in parallel to r2 as i did here this is an important step when you apply thevenin you need to short the generators so that's why r1 goes from here i'm assuming i'm basically mentally thinking that this has to become now ground and on this circuit, ground is actually here. This is connected to ground. So this means that this point now has to come here. And so R1 has to effectively come here. And that's why I'm drawing things like that. R1, R2. And here, as I did previously in C2, um, I have beta plus 1 RE. Just so that we can say that IB is actually flowing through here. And so this is beta plus 1 RE. Okay, as the trick we did previously. And so effectively now the total resistance is calculated by the parallel of these three resistors. That's it. So this concludes the three uh, important circuit realizations of the common emitter, starting from the very simple one, but very useful because it's also simple, and to the C2 with the emitter bias and C3 with uh, voltage divider extremely stable. Uh, just for your curiosity, uh, let's see, uh, let's have a look at the common base configuration, which is uh, this one here. So in the common base, as the term suggests, we need to connect the base to the common potential, so to the reference potential. And as you can see, that's what I've done. And uh, uh, again, we, uh, we will think of applying some voltages to the collector or to the emitter. Uh, from the way we have uh, connected the base, that is to the reference, this means that V by V, we are actually indicating VEB, because B is the reference. And by VC, we are indicating VCB. Excuse me the potential between the collector and the base. And so, based already on what we know now uh, from the, uh, co the, the common emitter configuration, uh, we know that the transistor will be, this, even this configuration, will be in the active mode if uh, B is in forward, the B junction is in forward bias, which means, according to these uh, uh, connections, VEB is smaller than zero. So as you can see, VEB must be negative so that this junction is forward biased. And BC junction must be reversed 
which means BCB positive. Okay. And uh, in this situation, uh, when the transistor is active, what we see in, uh, yesterday in the when we were uh, discussing the operating princi principle of the transistor, uh, what happens uh, microscopically is that there are N type carriers that move in this direction, if you remember, from the emitter to the collector. So in total, there is a current that is flowing this way. And so, uh, as we said yesterday, not all the end carriers that start from the emitter will end up in the collector. The vast majority of them will. So, uh, we, as, as we said yesterday, as we realized yesterday, IC will be proportional to IE with a, 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 a proportionality factor that we call alpha. Now here, uh, as we, this will be useful for uh, the what we'll do in a moment, the, the Ebers-Small model, model. We can call this alpha F, just to remember that uh, this corresponds to the transistor in active mode. Alpha F means forward. And uh, so, again, based on what we learned from yesterday, we already know that uh, this common base configuration is inverted in the inverted mode if the BE junction is reverse, so which means VEB bigger than zero, and BC is forward biased, which means BCB smaller than zero. And uh, in this situation, what happens is the reverse of what we just said. So, uh, the, the, this time are the end carriers from the collector that move in this direction, from the collector to the emitter. Not all of them will make it to the emitter, and so we can write that IE is alpha again IC, a different alpha, just because uh, now the the the, uh, the we are considering carriers that move from the collector to the emitter. In general, if the the collector and the emitter are not exactly the same, which means that this device is not exactly symmetric, then we should assume that alpha R and alpha F are not necessarily the same. Um, obviously, remember that these alphas are very close to one, eh? always. Oh, just um, uh, what I, what I, this thing I told you here about uh, these alpha F and alpha R is really general. It's not linked specifically to the common base. It's true uh, anytime. But uh, uh, what really links now to the common base uh, configuration is that, as you can see, um, in this case, uh, we have uh, a current IC that when the system is in active mode, there will be a current uh, um, uh, IC that is flowing in this direction. And this is now controlled by IE. Remember that the base is now is in common uh, uh, mode. Uh, is, is, is a reference potential. So really the other parameter that is important here is IE. So the output, the, in, a, in a similar way, if you remember the common emitter, uh, uh, the, 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 we were looking at IC and the other parameter was IB because the emitter was at common potential. Okay, so similarly here, the base is at common potential, IC is the parameter that is important, the, the, the quantity that is important, and the parameter that will control that is IE. And so the characteristic of this transistor is this plot is IC versus VCB. And um, and uh, what is it? And uh, the, the, the parameter is IE, as we said. We know that IE is equal to IC. So the interesting thing about the common emitter, uh, common, by, common base configuration is that the, the, uh, the, the value, you know, if this curve corresponds to IE equals 6 milliamps, IC is 6 milliamps effectively. We know that IE is proportional to IEC. And also is very flat, is completely flat. 
uh, is not a function of VCB. So this is kind of a different from what we've seen with the with the common emitter. And uh, concluding now uh, these things, I wanted to briefly mention to you a nice uh, model. We will not use this; it's just for your curiosity, really. Uh, but uh, it is a very beautiful model that uh, uh, represents very well the BJT transistor, reasonably well the BJT transistor. Um, and is extremely useful, uh, especially when you are uh, you want to model the BJT transistor um, for dealing with signals of any type and any amplitude, either DC or AC. Uh, I'm stressing the amplitude point because next week and the week after we will be dealing with the, the transistor the BJT transistor as an amplifier but we will dedicate it we will see it uh, um, dedicated uh, um, to small signals so small AC signals amplifier uh, and uh, which which is obviously covers probably the vast majority of the cases but in case you had to deal with large signals then you would use the Eber small model to approach this kind of, you know, uh, other other situation. So the Ebersmol model uh, basis is based on the fact that the transistor is uh, two p-n junctions back to back, and that's what it is, as you can see here. So we have a p-n junction here and a p-n junction here, and that's what you see: two p-n junctions. On top of that, on, on, on top of that, though, there are also two current generators, as I indicated there. And what they do, they uh, represent uh, exactly what we briefly mentioned a moment ago when we were discussing the common base, that uh, um, uh, both in when the the, the BJT is in four in is in the active mode or in the inverted mode, there are uh, uh, carrier in the in the in the in the active mode, we have uh, electrons that move in this direction. Not all of them will make it to this side. We said an alpha f fraction will, and that's what this alpha f i f is doing. Okay, remember, if electrons are moving this way, the current is actually this way. So, uh, if IF is the current here, then uh, the current here will be alpha F IF, and that's what this is doing there. And the same story if, if with, I, with alpha R IR. So, if the transistor is, uh, is, uh, is uh, inverted, uh, then we know that there is a flow of electrons that goes this way. This means, remember, not all of them will make it here. And so if this is IR, then on this side, I will have alpha R IR. And that's why this is here. So it's an extremely simple uh, uh, model, but very, very effective. And uh, here are the fundamental equations. So IR and IF are the effectively p and junctions uh, iv characteristic as you can see obviously uh, ir is governed by vbc and if is governed by vb and uh, we can demonstrate that uh, uh, this is the relation that uh, um, this uh, saturation currents ir0 and if0 uh, together with alpha F and uh, uh, alpha R should satisfy. And, uh, and uh, by simply looking at the circuit, you see IE, how much should be IE? It's IF. This is going this way. So uh, uh, simply using KCL in this point, we could write IF uh, must be equal to IE plus alpha R IR because uh, uh, IE and alpha R are going out from the node. So uh, IE, in the end, is IF minus alpha R IR. The same thing I can do for IC, and so IB will be this thing. And so um, this is uh, 
uh, you know, uh, a very useful thing to to know, just to know that it exists, and that uh, because I, I, you you may have the 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 question mark, you know, next next week we will see the small signal model for the uh, BJT amplifier, but that allows you to deal only with small signal, amplifies small signals. Uh, what happens if I'm dealing with large signals? You use the Eber small model. Okay, so thank you for listening. That's all I wanted to to let you know. Uh, please uh, make sure you understand the three different uh, circuit realizations of the common emitter. These are very important. Uh, we will uh, uh, um, uh, we'll work on these quite a lot in the next uh, uh, in the coming weeks. So thank you for listening, and uh, see you next time. Bye.